Hi everyone, this is Perik from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how I rigged this creature for Noara. I will show you how I created this deformable body and crab clothes, how to rapidly create stretchable and tweakable creature legs, and also how I've created this eyes rig. This echoes the release of my latest course, The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender. I received a lot of questions regarding creator rigging and if it was covered in this course. So it's not directly covered, but I'm using exactly the same mechanism as the one you will learn in this course. So if you want to learn effective creature or human rigging, just dive into this course and then apply it to your creatures. As usual, you'll find the link in the description below. The first stage is to create an armature and add the very first bone, which will be the root bone. And then I like to build the deformation armature, meaning that I will place all the bone necessary to deform my character. When rigging, I like to display the bone in front of everything by selecting the in front option. And I also enable the wireframe visibility so that I can see through the different bones. Bones naming is very important to keep everything organized and organization is one of the main principle of rigging. Even if a crab character should not deform since it's made of kind of hard surface, I want it to be able to squash and stretch it for animation purpose. So I've break down the body with four bones. Then I've extruded several bones along the eye structure, making sure that they are correctly and all aligned the same way and subdivided them so that I can deform the eyes with more freedom. To make this step easier, you can either snap your bones to the mesh by entering edit mode and playing with the 3D cursor and also display the wireframe in the overlay option so that you can align the bones with the structure of your character. As for the body, I've subdivided the main bone of the crab clothes so that I will be able to deform it in every way which will be very useful during animation. I've kept the leg pretty simple, creating one bone per leg segment. Then I've parented the character to the armature and I refined the skinning using weight painting. I won't show this in this video because this is very tedious. For the torso rig, I wanted to have a main controller that will allow me to move the whole body and then a mechanism that will allow me to deform the body, curving it by moving only one bone and then eventually have the control on each segment of the character. You can see on these few frames how the body is curving to follow the movement. The concept is very simple, it's the same as creating a regular spine. I will use a stretch to constraint on each bone with intermediate controllers. So I have to extrude them and then parent each bone of the chain to those bones. And then down the lines, I will use these newly created bones to add a stretch to constraint and a damped track constraint to the deformation bones. Then by moving these controllers, I will be able to deform each bone of the chain. Since I want to be able to move all these bones at once, but also move them individually, generally what I do is that I create a secondary bone. This secondary bone will be constraint, and then our main controllers will be parented to this newly constraint bone, meaning that they will inherit position, rotation and scale, but will be able to move them freely. So I will just create the main bone that will allow us to move all of them at once. And then I will extrude those new bones so that they are attached in the right position. I will also lean my previously created bones so that they are aligned with the world space. 
which will make them easier to animate later on. Then I will add a copy transform from the main bone to those newly created intermediate bone so that they will follow all the movements of this controller. The only thing I need to do then is to dial the influence of the copy transform for the second and third bone so that I have a nice fall off in the curvature of the body. This is one of the three bone based mechanism I show in the course. For the leg rig I knew I would rely only on inverse kinematic since forward kinematic was not that useful. So I've just recreated the chain here and what I will do is add this inverse kinematic constraint. So now I can move the leg as I want, but I can't stretch it. If I go into the IK option of the bone, I can add a little bit of stretch. I will repeat this on each bone, making sure that the stretching is under 0.1 to avoid bugs. Now I can stretch the leg, but the wall bones is scaling, which I don't like. What I can do is replace the inverse kinematic constraint by a stretch to constraint. To do so, I will have to create intermediate bone that will support the constraint. So this is the classical stretch to constraint chain I've shown in the course. I will extrude a bone for each deformation bones. I will parent the closest bone to those new controllers and then add a stretch to and damped track constraint to the bone. I can now stretch each segment of the leg without making them getting bigger and bigger as with the inverse kinematic stretching option. Now what I need to do is create a secondary chain that will allow me to drive those bones or control them using the inverse kinematic mechanism. So I'm just duplicating the chain and offsetting it so that I can work more properly. I will set a new inverse kinematic chain and then I will parent each of those controllers to each new segment of the inverse kinematic chain. This way, when I will use the inverse kinematic mechanism, the stretch to constraint bone will follow the inverse kinematic chain and so will the deformation bones. I will also fix the IK by removing the Z and Y axis for the rotation of the first two segments so that it behaves more naturally. In this case, I won't be adding the pole target, which I will on the character. This is a very common mechanism and this is not the point here. So now the leg is behaving properly as it is following the inverse kinematic movement and I can use the different stretching bone. But as soon as I stretch the leg using the inverse kinematic, I will have the same bone as before because our stretching bone are parented to the inverse kinematic chain. So since the chain is also scaled, those bones are getting scaled and since the deformation bones are parented to those bones, then the deformation bones are also scaled the wrong way. So what I will do to fix it is create an intermediate bone that will be parented to the inverse kinematic chain and I will tell those bones to constrain our controllers with a copy rotation and copy location so that our controllers won't be scaled. And so our chain will deform properly using only the stretch to mechanism. Now we can see that when I use the inverse kinematic, I can stretch the leg and it deform properly. The downside is since I'm using constraint, I can't move my tweak bone or secondary controller bone. So I will switch it from local space to local space and use the offset. But the problem is that it's not following the bone anymore. Because the bone it is constrained to is parented to the IK chain. A child bone that is transformed by his parent 
won't be recording any transform information. So when using a constraint from local to local space, it won't communicate any information. What we need to do is create a third bone and then add a copy transform to the second bone, the previously child bone, so that it will then have a transform information to send to the latest bone in the chain, which will now follow it in local to local space. And using the offset option, I will be able to move those bones freely upon the inverse kinematic mechanism and so have my leg rig done. So I've been doing this pretty fast here. If you want more in-depth information, don't hesitate to check out my latest course where I will explain all those principles more in detail. The crab leg rig uses exactly the same mechanism we've just seen. I've just added a pole target to make the IK more controllable. The first thing I did regarding the eyes rig was to make sure I can choose whether they are following the rotation of the body or not. So I did create a socket bone and a secondary bone. This bone will be parented to the body while the other will be parented to the root of the wall armature. And then I will use a copy location and copy rotation. And I will trigger this copy rotation using a driver. Whenever I want the eyes to follow the rotation of the body, I will be able to activate or deactivate the copy rotation constraint. I won't add a copy scale since the body can be stretched and squashed. Its scale will be changing a lot. So if I don't add this copy scale, I make sure the eyes will keep their main shape. I've then created an IK chain from the very root of the eyes to its base. So I've extruded the controller from the base of the eye and I've parented the closest bone so that let's say the eyeball, even if it's not a ball, will follow this bone while the arm of the eye will follow using inverse kinematic. I've then added eye tweaker using the stretch to constraint on each joint of the eyes and I then created a main eye controller that will allow me to squash and stretch at the whole eye. So you just need to build the chain and then parent the secondary controllers to add the main bone. Then I will just add an ultimate bone on top of it and add a stretch to constraint to this main bone. So I won't be using the main bone, but I will just move this one up and down to squash and stretch the eye. Finally, I've created a second chain of bone that will allow me to rotate and curve the whole eye at once. So the idea is that those bones will be the child of the main squash and stretch bone, and then the different eye tweaker or eye stretching controller will be parented to these small bones. Then I just need to add an ultimate bone that will constrain those newly created bones using a copy rotation. Whenever I will rotate it, this is going to rotate all those single bones. Since the tweaker or the stretch to bone are parented to these, they will follow their rotation and so the wall eye will be curving. So the idea is that with this main controller, I will be able to rotate the eyes and then move each joint freely or use the wall squash and stretch bone, the master one on top of the eyes to squash and stretch the eye. In the end, this is a lot of controller for a single eye. But the thing is, I will be mostly using the simple IK to move the eye and rotate it, a bit of the master squash and stretch, and a bit of this rotation boom. On the 15 animation I've made for this character, I think I've used those fine tweaker bone maybe on one or two animation only. The idea is to have it available. And lastly, I will add 
an action constraint to be able to make the eyes entering the torso of this character. So all those secondary controllers will allow me to properly curve the eyes, scale it, etc. to get a nice motion. What I did is to create a simple action where I manually animate those eyes entering the body of the character. Then I set the action constraint on one bone and copy it on all the controllers of the eye. The cool thing about the action constraint is that it is additive, so you can still work and move each bone freely. Then I've created a bunch of custom shape for the rig. I've then created bone groups with colors so that I can easily identify each bone. And finally, I've keyed all the bones using the right keying set, meaning that I won't be keying rotation on a bone that is not means to rotate, organize everything, and the character was ready for animation. I think the wall rigging process took me less than 10 hours before I could start animating the character. So this is the end of this tip video. If you want a real course about rigging, I truly advise you to take out my latest course where you will have step-by-step -step information about rigging for both beginners and more advanced users. See you!